Uh, good morning, everyone. Let me begin with extending a very uh, warm welcome to all of you to this roundtable discussion titled "Tech Driven Learning: Preparing Students to Become the Workforce of the Future." I am Rajiv Chandan, and I serve uh, Bits Pilani as part of their Work Integrated Learning Division, which focuses on education of working professionals meet their continuing education needs across nine industry verticals. I'll be your friendly moderator today, you know, for this particular discussion. So I was talking in the morning about the proximate, proximity bias, which I have with uh, Raman here. <laughs> so maybe I'll kick off, you know, the first question to him only Raman, since you are in Microsoft, look after the education vertical so closely. Yeah. What are the things, you know, uh, sitting there you see, uh, you know, are the key challenges which you think and hear of <coughs> in the higher education industries and those challenges uh, from a technology end, you think they can actually be turned into an opportunity? And it's something specific Microsoft is doing to, to address uh, you know, those challenges. First thing first, India has a great opportunity. Let me start with a positive. You have seen so many CEOs in the world, including Microsoft CEO, coming from Indian background. Now, a lot of them are educated in India. Okay, It's not like they have been educated all abroad. Even the MasterCard uh, CEO, who is now becoming a World Bank, was educated in St. Stephen's early, right? So, so, so Indian institutes definitely have an edge as far as academics are concerned. But when it comes to tech adoption, we still have students who want to go to international universities and, I mean, subscribe to their education. So I think this is a divide where Indian institutes have to shape up now because don't consider India as a market only. It's a huge market, but then it's a globe is your market. So, so one is accessing your competency from anywhere. Access is the most important challenge. And with AI coming into picture, with more and more people running their own setup on how they use those benefits, I think those research centers and research, I'll say, capabilities have to be brought to an international level where people start thinking. And that's where industry will play a vital role over there. Because I am working with few of my customers where we are setting up center of excellences also. So that they also know that, okay, how much we can, in, in fact, we are talking to MIT University also. And then we are talking to BM Munjal, we are talking to Shiv Nadar, all those universities where we are trying to bring our capabilities early in the whole process to them to teach their students. So I think access to technology is very, very important and going ahead of the digital curve. I think the second thing is, how do I create a personalized view? Okay. As he mentioned, how do I create a personalized program rather than just, uh, I'll say, more theory, less practical type of a situation, which I try to say. So, so can we have more of formative assessments built on technology rather than going for end of the year assessments because end of the year assessment means if you're not well that day it's not a true parameter of what you are so the assessments have to also change with times we are seeing a lot of them coming a lot of institutes are already getting into that platform thanks Raman. now uh, with that let me uh, you know uh, basically ask my next question um, we know that technology is proliferating. I want to go to Dr. Uh, Rama Kumaragiri <coughs> and Professor Dave. You know, the question which is in my mind is, uh, uh, as educators, you know, while you're hearing about new emerging technologies, but there's also adoption happening. And there are these early experiences you might be having with these technology. So what, what are these, you know, your own experiences so far have been and do you see a real impact, you know, of these technologies in an actual teaching and learning environment? So something directly coming, you know, straight from your own experiences. Sure. Maybe we'll start with you. So when we uh, look up at technology, three things that we hear is about AI or machine learning. But I wouldn't differentiate AI and machine learning. I would call that as AI. And then VR and AR. And then maybe something in the lines of block technology. Blockchain technology. Blockchain, Blockchain technology uh, will park it a bit later. Uh, and uh, AR VR is something that we can see as a easily implementable. I mean, it looks to be very difficult because AR VR is that you know you have to do lots of simulations and other. But please understand. I mean, if we look up at in the digital world, the best way to do something is simulations. Simulate. I mean, VR and AR they are slightly different. VR, which says that you have to have a digital or a computer environment only. AR requires both digital and 
real time or uh, realistic or physical environment so if we look up at ar maybe an example that uh, somebody let us say doing a repair of maybe let us call as a mobile phone maybe may not be mobile phone a technologist goes and he says that this is a part and then some image pops out and then he looks up okay you have to do here you have to do here that is my ar ar in vr I might simulate how a mobile looks like, but maybe mobile is a very bad example to look up at. Maybe something, let us say you are you are simulating a subcode or you are simulating a uh, an environment for a business or you are simulating something which is some sort of a low hanging fruit, but it's very important to imp implement and very easy to implement. And uh, the other thing that in our ex uh, from Bennett University's experience is that. it is very difficult to dictate things and let everybody follow the same thing on same day because we are also want to be democratic and forward in a certain manner and don't tag uh, all the disciplines in one maybe computer science requires some law requires completely different than what and media requires even more different than and maybe liberal arts require something so we cannot really look up at one solution fits all this is coming from our experience when we have shifted from when we have to shoot for covid uh, press the way yeah okay. uh, good morning everyone uh, i would like to start from uh, where uh, mr raman has actually uh, uh, discussed that that how we are approaching uh, in terms of adopting industry 4.0 technology and in technology in general first of all so there are two categories he mentioned that there are followers and then there are change makers or the leaders yes. but i would like to say there are if you look at the larger context uh, in our uh, education sector because i travel across and i find uh, there are actually three different uh, types of uh, segments number one uh, is uh, there are institutions which are completely unaware of what we are talking about i am talking about uh, institutions which are offering both technical non technical education in the rural areas semi urban areas they are not at all aware that what we are talking right now that is one segment which is completely untouched and i would say for uh, for technology companies that is an opportunity to make them on board or they take them on board rather then uh, important aspect that when we are talking about uh, followers and uh, change makers then followers are those institutions which we are talking about like they those who are interested to adopt technology to certain extents uh, they are forced to adopt technology due to pandemic and all and then later they are thinking and they are exploring how they can make use of technology in the classroom and off the classroom for technique for for various purposes uh, starting from uh, the institutional purpose use it in institutional purpose in strengthening the building of the institution right student recruitment and so on and so forth and erp and other things and then uh, using uh, it and other technologies for uh, making students understand and making them better uh, uh, you can say full workforce for the future so there are various facets of technology adoption that is what i wanted to highlight and uh, here we are talking about people uh, especially we are uh, talking about uh, industry 4.0 skills so here uh, uh, the major users are people those who are uh, uh, ready for informed decision making kind of roles where we are talking about uh, uh, meta cognitive skills and interpersonal skills and technological skills and uh, we are talking about system skills all these people are uh, uh, looking at but we are not understanding that uh, technology to what extent and how to use it number one we have to create a kind of a um, manual for uh, adopting technology in higher education uh, and how to start many, as i mentioned that many of the institutions are not still aware that what is the best use of technology and how to use it and they are using it uh, in bits and pieces and they are not able to understand they are not able to integrate technology in their overall uh, value proposition that is a problem You're saying they know about the technology yeah. but the but usage is usage is completely yeah. uh, disruptive uh, in terms of uh, uh, their understanding also now uh, if you look at institutions which are right now present here delhi based ncr based institutions which are ahead of the curve i would say 
and there we are using technology uh, i'm not talking about chat uh, gpt i'll come to that later on but before that even um, we have started using technology in terms of uh, lms solutions we have started using uh, technology in terms of uh, platforms like microsoft teams and all that is all okay and later on we have understood yes that now uh, people are students are the attention span we have uh, done a a uh, survey in 2008 also and 2016 also the overall attention plan, plan uh, uh, span is continuously reducing for students so the next question uh, i'll go to uh, professor pradeep kulashreshtha and uh, dr jyoti rana yes dr jyoti rana uh, i think the question to you is uh, you know everyone is excited about technologies and in the institutions we are seeing uh these technologies getting implemented but i'm sure uh, as academic leaders you are also first hand experiencing the challenges associated with each you know emerging technology so could talk about that and help us understand what those challenges are and i would love it if some of those challenges your institute or you as an educator have attempted to solve it it'll be great to also understand those ideas first of all thank you for uh, our guys for calling us it, it is a wonderful uh, gathering and i met lot of my friends here and my uh, colleague is also here so thank you once again and i'll uh, start my experience maybe pre covid then covid and post covid i am a basically teacher of law pre covid say class of 60 we will give some assignment we'll teach them something and we have a continuous uh, evaluation system and i could uh, figure out that out of a class of 60 maybe uh, the bell curve is made normally so uh, we have that intact during covid we were not able to understand how many how much learning is happening so it was all you know uh, that bell curve bad behavior and uh, students were securing 100% results no failure so we thought it is a covid time so let we up post covid we will tackle this issue post covid we saw the learning uh, are still a challenge because uh, i find those who are bright they could cope up but those who are average and below average they are still not out of that covid uh, maybe comfort zone and uh, my challenge remains uh, with my students uh, how to uh, ensure the outcome based education which they call about and in law uh, primarily they are uh, classical uh, work is litigation lawyer then uh, corporate uh, lawyering also came up and then they have independent practices all these three skills require thinking on the feet and you have to articulate and that there i feel that is when somehow if they depend on technology more they will be compromising their future uh, work in legal uh, profession at least and uh, law is status quo is by and large so uh, we have a council which controls legal education very slow to uh, you know take note of technology but uh, to my mind technology is good it helped during covid run the show otherwise we would have collapsed entirely ma'am i really want to hear your opinion yeah uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity and uh, i believe over the years technologies uh, are evolving and coming from the, the skill ecosystem and uh, uh, the skill university you know my experiences are a bit different uh, and uh, if i talk about the involvement of technology so uh, we really found uh, you know some at, at some very particular uh, places very challenging for us because skills for skills you know or for imparting skills among students you know that you require hands on training and especially i'll talk about the job roles because we as a skill university we are working against the job roles you know and we are preparing our students uh, for the job roles which are industry demand based and we are trying very hard because for us since we are the first skill government e government university so we were not having any reference points so um, industry was very kind enough and they cooperated us and we collaborated with them and you know we worked uh, you know very parallelly and you know in a very very collaborative way so there was a huge support from the industry side thank you so much ma'am i'll now move to another topic which again and again has come up in different uh, uh, you know conversation but perhaps is the time to focus on it 
Uh, the focus is on chat GPT. Okay. In fact, we don't have to even draw and focus. So much of uh, you know hype is already around in the media around this. Uh, this is for uh, specifically for Dr. Adesh Pandey, uh, Dr. Adesh Pandey and uh, Nikhil. Okay, so Nikhil, this is a question to you, uh, which is about chat GPT and uh, uh, in your experience or what you have kind of uh, found out. Uh, do you think it has a role to play in personalizing learning? Are there any ideas around there where such a tool, chat GPT, can be used for personalizing learning experience? Because people have different, you know, learners are diverse, you know, on so many bases. Is there a way to personalize their learning experience? And second is also on the assessment front. You said assessment is a hard question. Uh, so things like AI, okay, things like, uh, you know, chatbots, uh, or these kind of uh, softwares, can they also help in assessment? Maybe I'll start with you. Yeah, yeah. thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for a wonderful program. I want to uh, put in my view, implementing technology in a different view. Uh, there are always two aspects and we always debate. We were debating when computers were introduced in India. Okay, they are, the computers are going to eat the jobs of a lot of, uh, the, the system was there. And the same thing, same debate is going right now also as, a, as academicians senior academicians, we always have this kind of in things in our mind. How the AI techno enabled technologies are going to do the disruption in the education sector. But I think through the, the phase of pandemic, we understand that if we understand the problem well and the need of the, the technology, sure. the better we implement the technology. So rather than jumping uh, on the conclusion that the, the chat GPT or any AI enabled tool is bad or good, I want to discuss the problem face, especially by the tier two and tier three colleges and universities. Sir has rightly put uh, the, the prospects in the university or a college of size of 30,000 <coughs> and the classroom of size of probably 500. So now, now uh, see the aspect of, uh, there are two aspects, the student and the teacher. I'll discuss uh, the first aspect of the student. Is still we are facing the our students are bunking the classes. We all face this problem, and all institutions, all colleges, all across from IIT to the tier three colleges, we it still faces that uh, we are taking the the classes in the large volume. Are we are as a teacher able to provide the personalized content to our students? Is it feasible for for us? Is there is a scope for differential learning or uh, individual learning? How, as a teacher, can I focus on that to my student? Another thing, assessment. Uh, the beautifully, uh, the madam has talked about the assessment. As a teacher, as uh, am I able to provide the different kind of assessments to my students in classroom? Now, as a teacher, I have to perform a lot of other tasks, mundane tasks, uh, rather than teaching and research. So can the technology can help me as a teacher uh, for, for a teaching uh, community so that uh, I can focus more on teaching. We discussed about the AI co-pilot. I was just also reading in the morning. Uh, they, are, they are going to uh, amalgamate this with Office 6, uh, 365. So when I am doing my PPT and all those things, probably the co-pilot will help me by understanding my psychology and uh, I can cut my time on that. I can focus on my content more. Another very important problem, are we providing the right content all across the education domain? Probably the IIT professor or the good universities having a, a very skilled uh, professionals. You rightly said that Columbia University professor having a different mindset and the tier two, tier three college professor having a different mindset. Right now we are facing a problem of, uh, the, I think the first time in due to the computer science, the requirement, the requirement of skilled professors and manpower. There is a huge scarcity. So now, in, according to my, if I, uh, as a technology company, Microsoft and any other company can uh, have this kind of a discussion with us, what kind of problem your students are facing, as a students you are facing, and what kind of a problems as a education manager you are facing, third, what kind of problem as a teacher I am facing, <coughs> then probably as a, as a uh, academic manager, I, 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 I am here to talk in a positive side of the enable tool. For example, in 2000, uh, we all start using the learning management system. But uh, all of, uh, after some time, the learning management system, people start get worrying, the students are getting same quiz and all those things. So now, in spite of using the LMS, can I uh, add some AI tool with my LMS and can change the learning experience of my student? 
can my my student can get the the right quiz as per their adaptive learning for example now is very common to all uh, lms lms are providing this kind of facilities where ai ai level tool and data analytics are mixed with the lms and lms is taking partial decision by itself for the students and on the basis of quality of students and the psychology of teacher they are suggesting to teachers also that this is the right content for this particular students this set of particular students and this kind of a particular assignment or all these things is good for this thing here the role of chat gpt or yeah. the the mm. technology comes another thing you talk about the virtual uh, coaches and chat, uh, chat boards madam was coach <laughs> started i was studying the linkedin profile of ma'am see now for uh, the teacher is not possible i am also a teacher i can say so i can coach all the time my uh, 60 or 100 students so now i need a intervention of technology where i can reach to the need understand need of my students let's say five students of my class are in dire need they need assistance so there there should be some buddy system can i be my buddy as a teacher and where they can support me where i am not reaching the the technology can reach so i see the utilization of uh, chat gpt or any other tool here so nikhil on that note uh, we'd like to also understand from you yeah, hi very good morning to all of you yeah. see uh, let it be chat gpt or any other technology ai we are talking about first of all i would like to say that uh, uh, definitely personalized learning is there the first benefit that i see over there out of classroom learning the third thing is that it helps you to understand or learn as per the level of difficulty or understanding one person has so when i'm not from academics definitely from institution but what i believe is in a class of suppose 40 or 60 students a faculty has a uniform standard of delivering yeah, your absolutely right right Uh, concept over here, but not every student has that capability of grasping from the faculty. So that particular student needs to have a chance or an option to go back to learn that particular concept on the basis of his level of understanding and difficulty at any point of time. This is what it will help. Definitely, any technology that comes, it will have plus or minus, right? I'll tell you somewhere around six to seven years back, we set up a concept of OLA, O L A, not the cab. It's about open learning area, mm. right? In that particular, we uh, created a separate VLAN. We called up the students. We told them that you be in this particular area. There will be no firewall. There will be nothing as in restrictions to you. All IT hardware and software will be given to you. you will be able to sit over there a mentor by your faculty is over there and do the research and analysis whatever you want to do there will be students though those who will try to take disadvantage of that particular thing but in my opinion what happens is there are two type of network one is you impose the policies and you allow only few things to move around i can go to particular websites or you know other things and the other thing is open the network let the people or the students play around do their research work and find out the notorious one over there and this is what i believe in uh, i think the owner should be on professor pandey <laughs> pandey yes professor uh, pandey to talk about uh, how in your view you know technology could help address this challenge of equity and what what are some of those ideas around that uh, let me share the experience exactly it may be entirely different than what you people you people have we are catching more than 5.5 lakh student in this delhi region and you can understand we are charging very low fee maybe i think lowest in entire country hardly 3500 and all rupees per year for the student so imagine but we are totally dependent on technology and we really uh, i don't want to congratulate exactly we are taking lot of help from microsoft and in the pandemic situation in the covid period we have delivered more than 12000 lectures through microsoft team and not only delhi university entire college is only school of open learning students the entire delhi university student have been benefited by that so we are technology using the technology from last so many years we are fully automated in many sense 
but at the same we were uh, the discussion which you are taking place differently it's a different dimension it's not the one way because uh, definitely raman sir would like to have everybody must adopt the microsoft which is not i mean this is a, i'm just uh, putting because he has just put it that not bias is something like that but technology is helping a lot in the way that uh, uh, pandey sir was saying about that how whether the um, ai will give you the things in a form the teacher can teach yes it will give you may be knowing that already ai based news channel has started the ai gpat uh, 4 is coming that ai based news channel has already started and the idea of that new channel to give uh, provide you the most accurate result definitely um, uh, being an academician i am a, a technician you can call it we are using a lot of all the things uh, ai based technologies lms system or we are uh, even doing the assessment also or the internal assessment based on that many things we are adopting even uh, you may be knowing that we have conducted the online examination also Uh, maybe good or bad that we can't say at the moment but uh, anyhow we have done because conducting the examination of uh, five lakh students is practically it is not a very easy task exactly and uh, as i mentioned we are totally dependent on technology and really i am little bit involved with the digital university concept also you may be knowing to increase the ger government is bent upon to do anyhow use either gpt or whatsoever use technology or what and that is again the innovation of technology nothing else because digital universities concept is again it is not coming any kind of physical form definitely they will take the help of all the good uh, quality educa- based education system and they are uh, taking the courses of there to begin with and they will uh, impart the education to all now this is another area is very debatable as uh, you talk about the law take a subject which is for knowledge point of view because technology is not all thing in the entire world as uh, raman sir was already mentioned many ceos are from india and they are not only computer scientists imagine until or unless go with the philosophy technically subject is nothing these are all the call call commercial subject which you are learning for that why the maybe engineering maybe other kind of thing you are learning for livelihood activities but actual learning is really entirely different in the educational academic system uh, the way sir we been knowing more, a lot of research activity is going to be there all the technology is just to help you so we have like the lot of hip and cry is going to be there about the chat gpt and what no these are the technology based solutions it is up to you to use it so thank you so, so much so my next question is to major nupur gupta and dr sweta okay is uh, is whole thing about educator readiness okay it is not just about you know technology being there or not so what are some ideas there you know how can we really make educators more ready to adopt these technologies maybe i'll go to you first and then so before i take on this question i would like to thank microsoft uh, there is a personal experience approximately 100 plus students have been trained uh, in liaison with microsoft and aga khan foundation as their csr venture in our institute and we have recently trained our students for python and it was on a zero cost so it means a lot to us and the students are uh, upgrading on a skill we are talking of because maybe the curriculum is not taking python as of now so from here on i move to the question uh, which many of you have touched upon but one particular point where uh, ma'am had touched upon was the pace the technology is changing with a much faster pace in comparison to the way education industry is changing the nep has come and nep has come after a lot of due deliberation and in 2020 still if you see the recent instructions which are talking of they have not recognized a online degree as yet so we may talk of the recognition we may talk of accepting the technology we may accept uh, uh, recently sir and sir had mentioned that technology is a tool it is a tool of enhancing the educational environment it is just a one means that is going to help us in uh, distributing or sharing the knowledge but still the acceptance has not happened in the education industry so which is a biggest challenge i personally feel as a educator because whatsoever i may do even if i incorporate all technological tools i invest my resources still the educational degrees which students are getting had this been there tomorrow when i fill the educational form and say that my mba or my bcom or my L- 
LLB or my BA is coming from an online course. It is giving a different parlance and especially till today, distance and correspondence is also mentioned in front of it, whether your degree is a distance course or a part-time course. With Absolutely. this idea. I think it will beautifully express. Ma'am, if you could just uh, concisely. Well, thank you so much uh, for this deliberation and uh, Microsoft really like to thank uh, for bringing us all together. See, I would like to start with one thing. There are two, three points. I'll just summarize with it. But we have been speaking about 4.0 uh, industry revolution, but 5.0 industry revolution is just about to embark. And wherein we are going to see humans work alongside AI powered robots and very progressive technologies is going to be used to enhance the procedures. Now, when we talk about this, and when we talk about B schools, when we talk about educational institutions and educators as what is the role that we have to play over here is benchmark our curriculum with what is being expected from what are we going to create the output of it. That is our students. What are we going to create? Now, when we are trying to benchmark our curriculum, we really require the help of industry. We really require the technological, um, you know, people coming up and telling us this is what is required. See, even so we talk about being the educators, we talk about being the, uh, you know, on the side of education industry that we might not be able to see or even the Microsoft will not be able to see somebody has quoted, would not be able to see what down the line three years um, is lined up. But I would really write, like to, you know, put my humble point over here that yes, if the people, if the industry, the organizations, the sectors are working in the AI, the sectors are working for technology, they definitely will be able to foresee the future better than what we are going to look for. So yes, we should, as educators, we should be able to imbibe what is coming to us in the next two years, five years, four years span of time first. Second, cognitive, non-cognitive approach, non-cognitive concepts, where is it? Now, here when we were discussing about Professor Pandey has just spoke about, yes, there was, there is a, uh, you know, dearth need and requirement of technology. But then again, we could not say that, uh, you know, any faculty or a facilitator uh, can uh, uh, be, uh, you know, change with that of technology or chatbot or whatever it is. True. So here, when we talk about non-cognitive concepts, these are certain things that we are looking in for from the technological point of view that give us something wherein we are able to got students, wherein we are able to judge students, wherein we are able to train students to take those approaches, softer skills that we talk about. So thank you so much for all the points. With this, I think uh, I think our q and uh, I'll just go for conclusion to Raman because all that we have talked about, remember, if there is no infrastructure, okay, if there's no home, there is no, you know, residence, you know, you need that structure for that. So Correct. for the infrastructure, IT infrastructure, you know, need to enable all that ambition, all those expectations could throw some light, you know, on that. I think uh, more than the infrastructure also, infrastructure is just one part of the whole uh, strategy. Uh, and by infrastructure, I don't mean uh, what a lot of Indian campuses started doing is making huge campuses, investing a lot into buying a lot of computers. That's not the thing we are talking about. We're talking about a mindset change over here. We heard about a lot of things, uh, which is a summarized view also of what all of us think also. We spoke about AI to IAI, which is innovative AI. Like how does AI translate into uh, making a meaningful experience for the student? How does it help a teacher? How does it help a, a, a people who are running the whole setup? How do they help them in creating new opportunities to create revenue and create a better experience for the students? All of these things are interlinked. Then we spoke about chat GPT. I think this is something which is very, very uh, well covered today.